I don't think Perl has um, ever done anything like that, which which I think is a shame because we, we mostly seem to play catch up when, when something new uh, comes along, it will be added to Perl uh, in the near future, but it, it's, it, it never comes from Perl itself, uh, as far as I can remember. And um, this, this means that uh, because we're marketing from to, to the same people, which are Perl programmers, um, we don't get any new any new customers, and there's a whole of uh, there's a whole of confirmation uh, bias and backslapping, and everything looks good because uh, you know since if you've been doing it this way since forever, then um, when 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 asked with criticism, it's really hard to find criticism because that probably is the way that you would have done it yourself. Um, Another thing, another problem I find with um, getting new people on board is that for the you know, past couple of years, uh, there were a lot of services that came about, you know, like uh, Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, uh, OpenStack, uh, Streak, etc., and they never, uh, or almost never, have a Perl client library. Uh, obviously, you, these days, you have a JavaScript library, you will have a Python and a Java library, a .NET library in, in a lot of cases, and even a PHP library. But uh, Perl libraries seem to be written by the community as opposed to being provided uh, by default uh, by, by the companies that create these services. Obviously, the, the fact that they're created by the community isn't a problem. The problem is that people outside the community who go to one of these uh, shiny new uh, toys websites and look for the libraries, they won't see Perl there. So, um, you know, they won't know about it. I mean, it's, it's a, a vicious cycle. Um, I believe that one of the reasons that this is happening is because Perl doesn't have batteries included, which Python and Java, for instance, have. Uh, they do all this out of the box. And in this day and age, I don't understand why uh, um, these things aren't in the core. Um, you can, uh, I, people have argued with me about exceptions, for instance. Uh, I, I think you'll all agree that eval isn't really uh, an exception handling mechanism, at least not a pretty one. Um, you know, likewise, uh, uh, PSGI, uh, which is the, the way to do uh, uh, web services these days, uh, you, can't, you can't start new projects easily without installing a uh, model starter uh, or distzilla. There's no way, uh, you know, even external processing, you, you can't do it with Perl out of the box. Uh, and I would really, I would really like this, um, yeah, yeah. these sort of things to be, uh, to be in the core, to, in, in the standard library. Um, because if, if you have to choose between uh, uh, spending a lot of time installing stuff or just uh, writing it in Python, well, I would write it in Python. Um, because it's just better. Uh, as for the language, uh, I, I've always thought that Perl was a, a, a visual language because uh, I could just look at, at some code and notice okay, this is a scalar, uh, this is a hash, this is a reference, etc. Obviously, it makes your code look a bit like uh, you're swearing a lot which, for instance, Python doesn't. And um, Moose uh, has become a way to, uh, uh, you know, sort of a cop-out um, to, uh, uh, a cop -out to uh, the lack of uh, features in the core language, uh, especially when it, uh, not especially, but uh, when it comes to global uh, you just use moves and you know all your problems will magically go away. Uh, the thing is that in, in Python uh, or Java you don't need to do that. You don't need to 
use moves or anything else because uh, everything is uh, built in. So, for instance, uh, Pearl has, a, has a, a reputation of being quite terse and concise. But if you're going to write uh, a model or a class in Perl, usually start up with, uh, with this boilerplate, which uh, after reading and, and talking to people, is, you, you know, they tell, oh no, just, just use moves and uh, get rid of that crap. And, uh, and, you know, there are cool features that are, are being backported from uh, Perl 6 into Perl 5. Uh, so people just go, oh, yeah, you can um, uh, you can just use feature and um, and, still, and say, for instance, uh, you now have say available to you. At which point they say, well, actually, you can uh, you can just do use v5.10, uh, and you'll get that all for free. Um, but you know that's sort of cumbersome, and there are a lot. There are a lot more things than uh, just using uh, five or ten features and say, so you know you, you might as well just use modern Perl v five dot ten. But obviously that doesn't work because that's not the correct syntax. The correct syntax is this, which you know, makes sense. <laughs> um, anyway, oh yeah, then you have to clean your own spaces. So you uh, widely. A, a little bit more uh, um, boilerplate, um, and in the end, uh, you end up with something like this, which it, you know it's not bad, but uh, it's still four lines uh, that that you uh, that you have to have worked through uh, to get to. Uh, whereas, for instance, in, in Python, you write this, uh, which is a bit cleaner, uh, even in the in Java, which is, you know, the uh, very verbose and uh, uh, the language that wears your fingers out, uh, you, you just like that. So I, I think Perl could be improved. Well, it, it can't be improved at, at this moment, but th these are a couple of things that I like better in, in Python and in Java. Um, and then we have uh, the tooling problem. Um, it's uh, you know particularly hard to parse Perl, uh, which means tools like static analysis and uh, IntelliSense, which is you know just a bit more than uh, than just doing auto completion on, on keywords, uh, are very hard to um, um, to get into language. Uh, which means that for instance IDEs are uh, very hard to come by or actually non-existent. Uh, apart from Padre, I think, and uh, <coughs> possibly Eric in Eclipse. And uh, the, the answer to this is usually, well, you know, you, you just use VI or Emacs uh, to do it. The problem is that, uh, the, the problems I've seen in an enterprise is that if people are using um, Eclipse uh, to write uh, anything from HTML to Java to Python, uh, most of them are reluctant to use Another uh, another uh, editor specifically for Perl. Um, so I, you know, it would be nice to have uh, proper static analysis uh, and code analysis, which we now have with um, Perl Critic, uh, which is based on PPI and Marva. Um, but Perl Critic isn't isn't something that that you see in uh, that you can use in real time. So it's it's a bit after the fact. Uh, perhaps we we could do it with uh, probably sense and rope and the Emacs, but then again you get back to the problem of having to use Emacs to um, to get to that. So um, I, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a big lack of tools uh, and supporting tools, uh, which means again that the new fish won't won't just get sucked in, which is a problem. Now, however, not not all is uh, you know doom and gloom, uh, we, we have quite a few things. Uh, there's Paul Cryptid that I, I talked about. <coughs> uh, you have Carton to uh, ship and deploy dependencies to your code without needing to uh, have anything or to install anything on the server. So uh, your library or your apps um, get all their dependencies self-contained. 
it's now easier than ever to install uh, stuff with the CPNM and the uh, CPN file is getting uh, uh, as hit CPN some time ago and hopefully uh, it will become more popular as time goes by. So we, we, there's still, this, all these things are still um, separate and not integrated, but um, however, you know, there's some hope in the future, and yes, that's the default photo that comes in Keynote because there's no Wi Fi here. Uh, that's supposed to be a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really, really love uh, this Zealand, Zealand, which I think is, uh, is, is like Maven for Pro, but, but better because it's faster, it doesn't have to download all the internet to work, um, it does all the things that you need to do when you develop. So you, you can just uh, create a skeleton of the project. It generates a box for you. It runs tests uh, and author tests automatically. It packages it um, automatically, bumps version numbers and commits, and then pushes to CPAN, which, which I think is great. You can, do, um, you can have uh, templates, uh, which you can think of as Maven's uh, archetypes. So you, you just write uh, different skeletons for different types of projects. And then when you create a project, you just specify the, the template you want to use. And obviously, you can write plugins to it, uh, for it. And there are a lot of plugins on CPAN already for it uh, to do pretty much uh, everything you want. Uh, so I'm going to show you some of this Zilla stuff. If I change. Uh, and you can set options for stuff. 
things without the X are just uh, single plugins. And then you can define resources like uh, the bug tracker, the repository, uh, the web, the URL for the repository, and the type of it. Uh, you can tell it to auto automatically uh, figure out the prerequisites for your code, to generate a SIPM file, uh, to test the change log to see if uh, everything is there, uh, generate your documentation, create readme's. Uh, manage the version, bump the version, you define the format. Uh, and then there's this awesome bundle which is testing mania, which tests absolutely everything. You can disable stuff. I disable polity because uh, I had some problem with it, I don't know what. And uh, link check is broken and I haven't figured out a way to configure it like I want, so I also disable this. Uh, and then you can tell it to deal with it, uh, commit the build and uh, manage the next version. And uh, and then you can have some templates. Um, again, I need to. So there's a problem with uh, um, this Zilla, in which in in some in some stages, what you have available is your package name which uses this column column, and in other stages, what you have available is your distribution name, which uses dashes. So, you know, you have to, uh, you have to play around with, uh, with the names to, to get the correct version, uh, but you can write stuff like this, uh, and you can write stuff like this. For instance, here, name is available, which won't be available in the tests. Uh, I don't know why. Um, you write your abstract like this, uh, your synopsis, uh, this. The reason I need to get to the dashes is that you can do, because you can do substitutions, then you can insert all, the, all, all those things here. And uh, the beauty of this is that you can, for instance, uh, this will be um, using the default profile, for instance. And uh, you have a you have a skeleton for the for the project here. <coughs> you can now do uh, just let's just uh, uh, put this under version control, and uh, you can straight away do this will build, and uh, and it will build your um, it it will build your uh, a target set of um, of your uh, distribution. You can also do a diesel test, which will uh, run the tests. Well, the test that needs anyway, <coughs> so it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't run all of these because you don't need them because you're not releasing. Uh, but if you were to do a diesel release, which would eventually push to seed time, it would go in generate all the extra tests and um, and run all of them. And at the end, ask ask you if uh, if you want to uh, to uh, push to CPAN. Uh, if we have a look at this, at the file that was generated by this Zilla, you can see that uh, it, it does the correct thing. <coughs>
Yeah, basically that's it. Um, uh, I think I think the takeaway uh, I'd like from this is that we should focus marketing on uh, on uh, newcomers and not programmers, and more on newcomers and less on uh, uh, on current programmers because I don't believe we need to be uh, marketed to at this point. Um, I don't know if there's any time left. No, I walk around by six minutes, but no uh, one's not interrupted yet. So, uh, do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, so, when you talk to Python people, do you tell them that distzilla is like Perl's version of build out? Because that looked a lot like build out. Uh, well, I tell it as Maven mostly, or a set of tools if, if you're in a Python world. Um, it's more than a set of tools actually, because I have been fond of. Uh, bootstrapping. You want build out. It's called build out. It does all that stuff except that there's no CPAN to push to, but it does everything else you did. I recognize it all. It looks like build oh, out. Oh, okay. Okay. I did. I just used set of tools and I didn't know about that. As, actually, I'll I talk with you later. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, quick comment on the battery security point. Yeah. Um, and this, this is not just a comment for you, but for everybody here. Um, it is actually fairly easy to add modules to the Pro 4 and then ship a separate distribution. It took me all 15 minutes to add a bunch of modules and you know, have it with a nice part to see that it compiled all as one parallel yeah. and then it ends up having extra and various, um, there's no reason for you know, the core people to provide this. Just get everybody to have their own parallel distribution and public software. Nobody's stopping you from doing And, and furthermore, uh, Gabor Zavo already has I think just like this for both wind, which actually includes this material to the list of the Well, uh, you know, the 15 minutes comment might be true for someone who knows Pearl. Uh, I don't think it's true for a newcomer. Well, it's basically yeah. extract Pearl add to manifest. Now, the thing is, we build a distribution with all the batteries, and then we give it to a newcomer. We need to market our distributions of batteries to the non-pro yeah. people. Well, well the, point, the point is that they exist already. They do not have to be provided by the people to do the yeah, yeah, yeah. So market pro. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But uh, regarding that, that's for, that's a, for instance, if you look at Task Cancel, which provides a lot of good stuff, why the hell is it called Task Cancel? Why is it called Task, you know, recommended modules or? you know, task extended library. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just, ship, just ship a library with the name you like, but if I do task cancel, you're done. Okay. Yeah. Cancel <laughs> means what you said, except in smaller letters, you have to type less. There's also related to that practical problem. Say you said you wanted the Linux vendors to ship a bigger core. What, how do you call it? Yeah. We're actually getting kickback at the moment a lot from vendors, and Ubuntu is one of them, trying to strip out what they ship because they're particularly constrained by the small media sizes. Yeah. So they're looking to have a smaller Perl core. Anything you would do by adding things to the Perl core actually has a size problem in that your Linux box that you install from a DVD doesn't have it anymore. Well, I think, also I think part of the problem is if you say put the image libraries in, you put in your choice of image library as the core, if, say, 75% of people don't use images, what if the remaining 25% are happy with the default images uh, handling being provided? Because if you're going to have to change out for one that supports the format you like, or supports the, the transparency, which is all one is in the core, uh, supports a different way of pushing the results. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think that's fair, because the class schedule does exactly that. You know, someone has made a, an opinion at the chart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's it. But people do have different opinions in the ones you No, they, they do, but if you, if you, if you choose, uh, you know, sensible defaults, they'll, they'll, they'll just be there, ready to use. And then if they don't like it, they can go and install something else. Uh, you know, yeah, I think that's just a matter of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y